In the previous video, we saw how a manometer can be used in order to measure the pressure of a gas, and we discussed both absolute and gauge pressures. In this video, we're going to look at another application for YouTube manometers, and here we actually have an inverted YouTube manometer. Now this particular device here is going to be used to measure the change in pressure of a liquid flowing through a duct. Now this might be used to measure a pressure loss as water flowed through a valve or an orifice. Or in this case, it can be used to determine the change in velocity of the fluid as it goes through the converging section of the pipe. And we'll see some various other applications of these when we begin to look at Bernoulli's equation in later learning outcomes. Now, in order for this device to be effective, we need to make sure that the height of the manometer at position 1 is equal to the height of the manometer at position 2. And the best way to do this is to ensure that they're both sitting on the centre line of the pipe. The reason behind that is because the flow of the fluid is going to be fastest at the centre. And again, this is a principle we'll discuss in later learning outcomes, but in actual fact, what we would have if we were able to see the variation in velocity of the fluid, is at the two walls, the velocity would be zero and the velocity would be maximum in the center. So we get a flow profile that looks something like this. To help you to visualize this, imagine you're standing on a bridge and you're looking down into a flowing river. The water at the center will be traveling much faster than the water at the outsides. And in actual fact, because the water at the outsides may actually be static, there may even be stagnation of the water at the two banks. So we need to make sure our manometer is at the same height, both before and after the converging section. Now, all that we can use this inverted manometer for is to determine the change in pressure, because we don't know the pressure of the water entering the pipe, and we don't know the pressure of the water exiting the pipe. But this type of device would still be useful in various different heating, ventilation, and air conditioning applications. There are digital devices that carry out this function, but it's important to understand the principles behind how these different devices operate. Now the calculation for this is very straightforward. The change in pressure equals density times gravity times height once again. Now as we said, we have water, and the density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. And let's specify that the height difference here is 1.8 meters. Therefore, the change in pressure is just 1000 times 9.81 times 1.8, which equals 17658 pascals. The other thing that's important to point out is the pressure in the wider section of the duct is actually higher than the pressure in the narrow section. Now that change in pressure isn't necessarily due to a pressure loss. Even if all of the energy of the fluid was conserved, we would still see a drop in pressure as we went through the converging section of the pipe. And the reason for that is because the velocity of the fluid increases. So on the left hand side, we have high pressure and a lower velocity. And on the right hand side, we have a lower pressure and a higher velocity. And in future tutorials, we'll look at how we can calculate the changes in velocity as well as the changes in pressure. So it's important to understand that these devices do have various different limitations. We can see in this scenario, as an example, we have a height of water equal to 1.8 meters. So what we would have is a very large YouTube manometer. It's by no means a portable device. It would be very difficult to move this from one location to another. Another limitation might be thermal expansion, because as liquids become hot, they would expand. A good visual representation of this would be mercury in a thermometer. As the temperature increases, the mercury expands, and the mercury moves up the capillary within the thermometer. Another limitation that makes these devices relatively hard to read is if the pressure difference changes, then both of these levels would change. If the pressure difference increased, then the level on the left would go up and the level on the right would go down. 
So because we don't have a zero line or a datum, it can be quite difficult to read this type of device. And finally, we've said that we often use mercury in these devices because it's a high density fluid and can be used to measure greater pressure differences. But a disadvantage of using mercury is that it's harmful or toxic. So we do have to take quite a lot of care not to damage these devices. And as they're primarily made from glass capillaries, they are still susceptible to damage.